Hola y bienvenidos a Lightspeed Spanish. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm talking in English and I'm going to talk about what if I were to learn Spanish again? What would I do and what would I not do? Hablamos de todo en la siguiente parte. So I was talking to Cynthia yesterday. We were talking about the feeling that you get, that I got when I was first learning Spanish. The, the thrill, the excitement, the passion. And it's something I've seen with a lot of students. This, I don't know why I'm so excited about learning Spanish, but I am. And, and that kind of, you know, I, I've been learning Spanish for more than 20 years now. And so that initial thrill, which were well, initial, I say, but it lasted a long time, a long time. It's kind of changing now. So I'm, I'm very, very comfortable with Spanish now. It doesn't scare me. And being scared of the language keeps you on your toes as well. Does that mean that I'm sorted with Spanish? No, not at all. But I, I don't have that kind of ooh, ooh anymore which is good, and it's a shame as well, because I quite like to. So I was thinking about what I would do that I did and worked first, and then what I did and didn't work, and I wouldn't do that again. So there are lots of things that I did that I thought worked a lot. The first thing that I did was to um, study every single day without fail. And not only did I study every single day, but I also studied various times a day. And I, and I tended to do sessions of about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I would do session and then I would go and do something else and I'd do another session and I might work from an exercise book and do sort of, you know, dr drills, writing sentences, and then I might read a, a novel for a bit read a novel out loud. That that was tremendous for me. I didn't do that at the beginning. I didn't read out loud. Why? Because it was too hard. Reading out loud is hard and you've got to have already a decent level to read out loud and for it to sound good. Yeah. But I did it when I needed to change my accent. I was speaking with a Mexican accent. I was saying cerveza and I had to change that to cerveza. And so it, I started reading out loud so that I could create a loop to hear myself and change the, the way that I did that. And that took me about three months to do. And that was a tremendous exercise. But then I continued reading out loud because I realized how good it was for my Spanish. So that's something that I would always do. If I were going back, I would read out loud. It's beautiful. I also had the luxury of living in a Spanish-speaking country for two years, right at the beginning. Would I choose to go and live in a Spanish-speaking country right at the beginning, when I was a beginner? I mean, I had three months worth of basic Spanish when I went there. Would I do that again? Mm, yes. Yes, I think there's something about being thrown in at the deep end that makes your mind work much faster than if you're not under pressure. When you're under pressure, your mind, especially with language, and when it's very important that you understand and people understand you, then the mind really does work at an accelerated pace. So I wouldn't change that, but I would change a very important thing that I didn't do then that I really should have done. What I should have done is I should have contracted a teacher at least on a weekly basis, if not two, week, uh, two times a week, to ask them all of the questions that I had about my confusions. You see, when you are thrown in at the deep end, when you go into total immersion, all you have are questions. All you have are confusions. And I really should have taken those two years to consolidate all of that. I didn't. So I came back from Mexico to the UK with a million questions, a million questions. Then I did my GCSE and then I did my A1 
and then I did my A2. Okay. If I were to go back, I definitely would not do them. That was a definite waste of my time. However, it focused me. I was focused. But what I discovered was that the, the Spanish that I was taught wasn't a valuable Spanish. It was written, it was exercises, it was preparing for at least, well, the entire year that I did my A-level. They were preparing me to pass the exam. And so what happened was I passed the exam, of course, but I didn't feel that I got, for the time that I invested in it, I didn't feel that I got the benefit. So what would I do instead of taking those exams? I would... I mean, I took the exams, just so you know, because my plan was to be a Spanish teacher and work in school and teach Spanish. So I had to go down that route. And if that's your route, you have to go down that route. Get qualified, of course. But don't think that those kind of uh, courses are going to teach you Spanish. They're going to test your Spanish at the end. In the meanwhile, you've got to learn Spanish. So I wouldn't... Now, knowing what I know, because I did my GCSE, then I did my A-levels, and then I did my university, open university, and then I took my degree. And uh, I've never used it. Never used it, never needed to. Obviously, in the work that I do, I'm self-employed. So it was, that was a lot of effort for not so much gain. So maybe I, if I went back, I would invest my time in something else. What would I invest my time in? Well, I would get a private tutor. Now, I've talked about when I was in Mexico, I should have had a private tutor. But what I would do now is this. I would get, as soon as I came back, you know, after I'd had all of this information, I would get a tutor that I could talk to in Spanish. And I would talk to them in Spanish. I would pay them to listen to me in Spanish, making notes about all of the errors that I was making. And then let me talk for in an hour. Let me talk for half an hour or let me talk for 20 minutes and then review that conversation and review all of the things that, yeah, hang on, you, you said that and you maybe you should have said this. What? How do you think you should have said this? What happens and what I've found, I've used a system with all of my students. When you say to the student, you right, you said this, but that's not quite right. What would be the right thing? Most students can autocorrect that. Remember, it's one thing when you're talking, when you're just, you know, streaming, all kinds of errors come out. And there's another thing when you're thinking about it. But that loop of you said this, what's a better way of saying it, is fantastic. And so I would pay somebody to do that with me. At the same time, I would have a teacher to answer all of my questions. And I would also have, whether it be on your phone or a pad, I would note down all of my, my confusions. Just keep a list of all of my confusions. And then when I got the tutor, I would say, right, explain this to me, explain this to me, explain. Remember, teachers, you were paying them. They are working for you. When my students were paying me for my time, they were paying me for my time. I was working for them. And so you have to give them what they want, right? So don't be worried. Don't think your teacher, your teacher will just guide you. No, you guide your teacher. You tell your teacher what you want. That's another lesson that I learned. Don't let the teachers guide you. They don't know what you've got, what you haven't got. Tell them, this is where my confusions are. You know, later on they can guide you, but at the beginning you tell them. That's what I would do. And at the same time, I would have somebody to talk to, if not one, many. People, native speakers, now online, I would talk to native speakers. I used to do that. I was in a chat room called the Spanglish Chat. But at the time, it was so, I mean, they were talking 20 years ago. There was no um, you know, one-to-one. -one. You couldn't talk to people. There were no cameras. You could just write. But now there's a lot of opportunity to talk to uh, native speakers. And that's what I would do. The more people, more native speakers you talk to, the better your Spanish would get. So that's kind of what I would do to make sure that my path was faster. I believe I could have learned Spanish faster than I did. And I think I went at a good pace because I was obsessed and because I did it every day. And that's an also an, a key, is doing something every day, many times a day, not in one block. And I've talked about this before. Don't 
do a block of like a two hours a day and solid block. No, if you can split it up, the mind prefers much more little chunks. Chunk it down for the mind. It loves that. It doesn't like big blocks. Your mind goes off. And also I would spend 80% of my time speaking and listening. 80% of my time. Why? Because that's how much time we spend speaking and listening in the real world. If not more, we talk and we listen. We don't write. You know, when you're with your partner, you don't spend your day writing them notes. If, you, if they're next to you, you talk to them and you listen to them. And that's the kind of way that language is. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't spend so much time uh, doing books. I used to do a lot of books, but that, that's what was available. Now I would spend more time speaking and listening, speaking and listening. And if I couldn't speak and listen, reading out loud, reading out loud, because it's virtually the same thing. You're speaking and you're also listening to yourself. I often say to my students, uh, this is not life threatening. You know, this is supposed to be fun. It's a hobby. And I think if I if I also went back, I think I would probably be just a little less serious about it. I think I was a, quite serious and, and that happens. I think we do get very serious about it. But I think I would just kind of just chill out a little bit more, knowing that you were still going to get there. You know, whether you're clenching your teeth or whether you're relaxed, you're still going to get there. However, I do believe that being serious about it makes it happen, you know, um, much better to be serious than to be flippant. And I think that's about it. Looking back, I don't think I did a bad job. I think I did a good job, but I could have been a little bit more efficient. Just now, knowing what I know now, if I'd started, you know, understanding a better path. And definitely the key, the, the, the most important thing is to have somebody that you can ask questions to, a tutor, somebody who understands the language and somebody who can explain it well. That's the not somebody who's going to say, well, this is what grammar is. And no, no, somebody who can explain what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you do it, when you do it. That's that's a good teacher. A good teacher can tell you how to do it and when you do it. Two very, very important questions. Okay, so I hope that was valuable for anyone who's starting off on the journey or anyone who's in the middle of the journey. Many. We're all in the middle of the journey. If anyone's at the end of the journey, they wouldn't be watching this anyway. Vale, entonces, eso es todo. Os quiero mucho y nos vemos. Hasta luego.